the refraction, part two. So now we're going to go on to the mathematical application of refraction, and it's called the law of refraction, or Snell's law. Here it is. It's a multi-part formula. Once again, with these multi-part formula, you just pick this and this, or this and this, or you can do any combination you want, or this and this. So you just pick pairs of them. And what it says, so what's that? It says the sine of the angle of the one really means the sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction equals n, the refractive index of the second substance, the second medium, divided by the refractive index of the first. So n, n as you can see, is called the index of refraction for the medium. And mediums, each medium has its own index of refraction. If you're out in space, the index of refraction is one. If you're in water, the index of refraction, I think, is 1.3. Um, glass, that's uh, water, that's uh, space or air. Uh, if you're in glass, I think it's around 1.5. So each substance has its own unique index of refraction. Oh, in diamonds, in diamonds, that's why diamonds are so shiny, it's 2.42, I believe. 2.42 has a very high index of refraction. So that's what the n value is. It's the, the higher the index of refraction, the slower light travels in that medium. And then you've got the wavelengths over here, and you've got the velocity over here. And just make a note that the index of refraction is always 2 over 1, or refraction over incidence. And all the other ones are 1 over 2. So make sure you don't get that confused. Uh, oh, yeah, it says right down here. Here's water, 1.33, and here's a diamond, 2.44. 2.42. Okay, uh, there's a diagram I did in the last lesson about why you like bends. Um, the coin trick you should have uh, seen in that other video. Um, oh, I totally forgot in the last lesson. I should have asked you, you should also go and watch, uh, where is it? You should go to, go to YouTube, uh, Google refraction of light and watch one of these videos at the top here. I like this one down here with uh, my brother from another mother. Um, but these are both really good videos, good introduction videos to the refraction of light. So stop this video, go watch those just to review what we've talked about, and then you can come back to this, the mathematical application of the, of the refraction of light. Here are some different mediums, and here are their indexes of refraction. You don't have to memorize this. The only useful ones to know really are air and water, and you can see the vacuum, that means in space, and air is the, is the air within the atmosphere of the Earth, and they're, they're so close to each other that we just say one for air within the atmosphere. So here's our example. We have a beam of light traveling in glycerin. In glycerin, glycerin has an index of refraction of 1.47 between itself and water. Water is 1.33. It's traveling in glycerin, and it's a boundary between the water at a 43 degrees from the normal. Determine the angle of refraction. So always start off with a little diagram. So it's starting in glycerin. Glycerin. And it's going into water down here. And glycerin has an index of refraction of 1.47. And it has one, this is water is 1.33. So we know it's going from a more dense medium to a less dense medium. So automatically you should know, is it going to bend towards the normal or away from the normal? And in our previous example, let's just go back to uh, that sketchy diagram I drew right down here. We can see if it's going from a more to a less, it bends away from the normal. Okay, so if it's hitting at a 43 degree angle, here's your normal, and it's hitting at a 43 degree angle, so something like this. So this is 43 degrees, and this is your angle of incidence, your angle of incidence. And we know the ref it's going to bend when it's going from more to less. It's going to bend away from the normal. Away, so it's going to bend. I'm just going to make this a little 
a little exaggerated, so it's going to bend this way. In other words, this angle here, the refracted angle, is must be, the refracted angle must be greater than 43 degrees, because it's bending away from the normal. If it bends towards the normal, the answer is less than 43 degrees. So we know that the answer must be greater than 43 degrees, and now we can set this up mathematically. Sine 1, oops, sine theta 1, ah, divided by sine theta 2 equals n2 over n1. Don't get those mixed up. They're always opposites. In other words, the sine theta, so that's going to be sine 43 degrees, corresponds to what is, is my, so 43 degrees respond, uh, corresponds to the glycerin, so does the 1.4 go on the top here on the bottom? And it goes on the bottom, because we have a 1 and a 1. I could put glycerin here and glycerin there, and so 1.47 goes down there. Sine theta 2, that's what I'm uh, trying to find out, and the index of refraction for water goes up here. And then I'm going to get my calculator, I'm going to cross multiply and divide, and then do inverse, the inverse uh, sign to get the angle. And I should end up with an angle of 49 degrees. Okay, so just make sure you plug that into your calculator, right? It ends up being sine 43 degrees times 1.47 divided by 1.33 and you get a, uh, some decimal and you inverse sine of that decimal and you should get 49 degrees. And this diagram is important because then you you know that we should have got an answer that's greater than 43 and if you mix it up, if you accidentally get these mixed up, you would have got an answer less than 43 degrees and you would have known that you had made a mistake and you could go back and fix it. So uh, once again, diagrams are pretty important. Let's move on and do another example. So for this example, we're going to do use Snell's law to predict a change in wavelength. And here we have a beam of light of red light, which has a wavelength of 700 nanometers. 700 times 10 to the negative 9 is traveling through water. And it leaves the water and goes into a piece of flint glass. So this time it's going from a less dense to a more dense medium determine the color, so they don't even want just the wavelength, they want the actual color approximately that it will be. So once again, we'll draw a diagram. Doo, doo, doo. So it's red light. Red light, now it doesn't have the angle, so it's kind of irrelevant, but we'll just do red light. Doo, 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 doo. And it's going through water, so here's the water, and it's going, it's 1.33. And it's going into a piece of flint glass, which is 1.75, so we know it's going to bend. It's going to bend away from the normal or towards the normal. It's going from less dense to more dense, therefore it bends towards the normal. So this angle and this angle, the, this angle is going to be bigger than this one. Now, of course, that's totally irrelevant to the question. You don't really even need to, to do this diagram, but why not? Um, we can set this up right away. We have the index of refraction, index of refraction, we have the wavelength. So here we're going to be N2, remember the 2 always goes on the top, over N1 equals lambda 1 over lambda 2. And what are we solving for here? We're solving for lambda 2. So lambda 1, that's the wavelength of the red light. That's where the 700 nanometers goes. And if you want, you can just put 700. We don't know. You can put just 700 nanometers. You don't need to do 700 times 10 to the, uh, to the negative 9 because you're, you're just going to get an answer in nanometers. 700 corresponds to what? That's where the red light, the beam of red light is traveling through the water. So that corresponds to the 1.33. Where does the 1.33 go? On the top or the bottom? On the bottom. 1, 1. Obviously the 1.75 goes on the top. Solve for lambda 2. So you end up going 700 nanometers 
or 700 times 1.33 divided by 1.75, and you end up getting... Five hundred and thirty two nanometers, and then they want approximately what color would that be? Well, we know we know that red um, I was uh, okay, I will do this. red is over here at seven hundred nanometers. Blue is over here that's not blue. Blue is around four hundred nanometers. Green is around five hundred nanometers. So this would be, and then if you, if you do your Roy G. Biv, Roy G. Biv, you can see that 532 is probably going to be in this area. So the answer to that question is a, it's a yellowish green. It's a green, but maybe trending towards the yellow a little bit. Okay. Ooh, that's a long lesson. We'll stop it there, and then we're going to come back and do a part three of refraction, which is on the speed of light. Sweet.